Good afternoon. Today, Saturday school, guys. Good afternoon, guys. Are we looking forward to our session today? Yes. Excellent. So today we're going to be learning about Job. And we're going to be learning about faith, purpose, and blessings. So today we're going to be looking at two books in Job. The whole of chapter one in its entirety and the last chapter of Job from verses 9 to 17. So as I'm reading, I will be explaining some things just so that you're clear. What I will say is pay attention to the story because when it comes to the quiz, there are going to be some questions in there that if you weren't paying attention, you might miss. I just want to write my number. You've got to pay attention now. So Job 1 to, 1 to 11. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household. So that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. And his sons would go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day. So what this means is that Job's children always liked to have parties, right? Mm -hmm. And they did it because they all lived in their own houses. They had parties in their own house, okay? Each on his appointed day and will send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was when the days of feasting had run their course that Job would send and sanctify them and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. So how many children did Job have in total? Ten. Ten. He had how many daughters? Ten! Three daughters and seven sons, okay? For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus, Job did regularly. So basically, what we see here is that while Job's children were partying, he was worried that they might have done something wrong, they might have done something that would upset God. So every time after they finished doing their party, Job would call them, he would speak to them, he would pray, and then he would sanctify them just to make sure that they were all right with God. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan, now who is Satan? Do we know who Satan is? Satan is evil. Satan doesn't want us to love God. Satan doesn't want us to honor God. So Satan tries so many ways to try and trick us so that we would upset God, so that we would do the wrong thing, you know? So, this is going to be a hard story. So, to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro the, on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him? So a hedge is like a protection, okay? Around his household and around all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But now, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will surely curse you to your face. So here's what the devil was saying. The devil was saying, oh, the reason that Job loves you so much is because you just love him, you protect him, you've given him so many things. So of course he's going to love you. Who doesn't love someone that looks after them? But you take everything away from him and watch. He's gonna, he's gonna hate you. He's gonna not want to be around you. He's not gonna want to know you anymore. So this is what Satan was arguing, telling God that the reason that Job That's is doing so, so well, it That's is really bad. The reason that Job is doing so well is because of what God has given him. So let's let's keep reading and we'll see. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, 
All that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. So basically God says, okay, Satan, if you think that Job doesn't really love me, all right, you go ahead, take all of Job's things. The only thing you mustn't do is you cannot kill him. Okay, you can take everything that belongs to Job, but you cannot touch his life. So Satan went out to go and cause havoc, to go and cause disaster, to go and cause sorrow, to go and cause pain. So now we're going to see what happens. No, God told Satan that Satan cannot kill Job, that he has to leave Job's life. But everything else, he can do whatever he wants with it. Satan. So let's keep reading. He can take his toys, exactly. He can take everything. He can take even that, okay? That's true, but let's keep reading and see what happens. Now, there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabians raided them and took them away indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels and took them away. Yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell on the young people and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his robe, his robe on his clothes and shaved his head. And he fell to the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. So now we see that Job was in a lot of pain. All his camel, all his sheep, all his donkeys dead he has no way of making money anymore now he's going to be poor but that's not even the worst of it the worst is his children how many children did job have seven Seven. no he had ten seven sons and three daughters okay all ten of his children dead at this point it's just too much for job to bear so what does he do what does he do Pray to God. That's the only thing he could do. So he can, just prayed to God. So we can bless his children to come back. We don't know that, but we'll continue reading. Okay? Now, this is the last part. So, Eliphaz, the Timonite, and Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Naamathite, these three people were Job's very good friends. And instead of supporting, instead of supporting Job, what they did was they were trying to find a reason why all the disaster happened to Job. So basically they were blaming Job. So instead of them being good friends and encourage him, they were like, Job, you must have done something. You must have offended God. Like, why is all these bad things happening to you? You you must do, you must have done something that we can't. So just confess it, confess it, confess it. Because if you confess it, you know, maybe all these troubles will stop, right? So these three friends, Eliphaz the Timonite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Nemetite, they were friends of Job. They went three. and... Yeah, there are three of them, right? They went and did as the Lord commanded them, for the Lord had accepted Job. So basically, what had happened here was that God wasn't very happy with these three friends. He wasn't happy that they did not support Job. He wasn't happy that they kept trying to fault find and say, Job, confess, what have you done wrong, right? 
So God told them off. God scolded them. And God what said... Is, what does scold? It means telling off. And God that, said... That the way of saying telling off? Yes. And God said, you must go to Job now and ask for forgiveness. So three of them went to Job. Because God had accepted Job. So remember, all that disaster and all that pain that Job was going through, right? God had explain to job everything that was going on so job now had peace job could now understand what those testings were the loss of his sheep the loss of his children he could now understand why it happened that it was the devil satan trying to test his faith in god so it says and the lord restored job's losses when he prayed for his friends so god said to the friends go and ask job for forgiveness when the friends come, Job could have said, you're not my friends anymore. I don't want anything to do with you. In my darkest hour, in my time of need, you hurt me. And he could have said, I'm not interested. But what does Job do? Because Job loves God so much. Job's like, okay, apology accepted. Let, let me pray for you. So basically, Job prayed for them. He, he didn't love sin. Exactly. So Job prayed for his friends. Then it says, indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. So then all his brothers, all his sisters, and all those who had been acquaintances before came to him and ate food with him in his house. And they consoled him and comforted him for all the adversity that the Lord had brought upon him. So to console and to comfort means they encouraged him. You know, they said, oh, Job, it's all going to be good. You know, God works in wonderful ways. They just encouraged him, okay? Consoled and comforted in this verse is also the same as encouraging him, okay? Each one gave him a piece of silver and each a ring of gold. Now, the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than the beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep. In chapter 1, he had 7,000 then. Now, God has blessed him. He's got 14,000. That's double. In chapter 1, he had 3,000 sheep. Now, he's got 6,000 camels. In chapter 1, he had 500 yoke of oxen. Now, he's got 1,000 yoke of oxen. In chapter 1, he had 500 female donkeys. Now, he's got 1,000 female donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. Yeah, so kids. he had the same number of children that he had that passed away. So he had seven more sons and three more daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima and the name of the second Keziah and the name of the third Karen Huppuk. In all the land were found no women so beautiful as the daughters of Job. And their father gave them an inheritance among their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years and he saw his children and grandchildren for four generations. So Job died old and full of days. So see, Job's story had a really beautiful ending and God be praised for that. So now we're going to watch a video. And did God heal him? Yes, God restored everything that Job had lost. God gave it back to him. So now for those of you watching online, Please check the links below because we're about to watch a video now. So yes, just check the links in the descriptions and you can watch the same as we're watching. So can anyone give me a quick summary of what you picked up from Joe? It's yes. very short. So what did you say? Said so you should always stay with him and stick, Obey him. And stick through the wise First things first, God is not the one that sends you harm. God doesn't cause harm. Who was the person that was causing harm? God never causes harm. That's the first principle we learn. God never causes harm. Secondly, even when you're going through difficult times, who are you supposed to look for? God. Who are you supposed to ask to help you? God. You don't end up cursing God. Because what was the question that God asked Job? God said, can you tell the sun to shine for you? If you go outside and say, sun, shine for me, will it do that? Yes. No, it wouldn't. The sun doesn't respond to you. God has already programmed the sun to shine. 
So if you told the sun to stop shining now, it wouldn't respond to you. Because you didn't create it. God created everything. So what God is trying to say is that he knows everything. And in every time he's working to make the best situation for all of us on the planet. Which is why we should never really question God. Instead, we should trust. And if we're having difficulty, we should be like, Lord, I'm struggling. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Focus on you. Help me, Lord. Trust you. Even when it's not making sense. Help me, Lord. Trust you. Okay? So when I'm asking you to tell me what that passage means, I'm asking you to tell me what it means to you. Not what the story is, but what it means to you. So who God is? Who God is in this story? So we see that God is love. We see that God has wisdom and that he has power. What is God? Right? So in this story, we see a God that loves so much. So we see a God that has so much wisdom. Because one of the questions that God asked Job, Job couldn't answer. God said, can you tell the sun to stop shining? Can you tell it? Can you command all the planets? No. And the person who designed the galaxy, the person who designed the universe, who is God, is so wise. He knows how everything is stationed, okay? And we see that God is all powerful. Because what was the thing that God told Satan? He said, look, you can take everything from Job, but not his life. Don't touch his life. So we see that even in that situation, God was very powerful. And God was showing Satan who the boss is. Okay? And that story of Job is there for us, for me, for you, for you, for you, for you. It's there to show us that even when we're going through things that we don't understand, that can be painful, that is sad, we should trust God. Okay? And you're never too young to trust God. So... We see that God cares for his creation and people are also part of his creation. All right. Like I said, one of the things that God told Satan is do not touch. Don't touch Job. Just leave him as is. You go and do what you need to do. I will show you that beyond the body of Job, the spirit of Job loves God. So even whatever you do to the flesh, whatever you do to his mind, he will love God. Again, we see God's wisdom is beyond human understanding. Because like I said, when God asked Job questions, Job couldn't answer. If God was to say to you, do you understand how even a baby is formed in the womb? Nobody could. Scientists would tell us, oh, your sperm meets the egg, fertilization occurs, and, you know, the baby you know, is formed. But who's the person that tells that particular sperm to meet that particular egg? Because there are millions of sperm swimming and only one makes it. That in itself is a miracle. That in itself is a miracle. It's Jesus. Okay? Jesus. So now, quiz. All right, I'm going to only read the question once. All right? And you've got to listen. Question one. Who was a kind and wise man from the land of Oz? A, Noah. B, David. C, Job. Question two. Why did God allow Satan to test Job? A, to make him wealthy. B, to challenge his faith. C, to punish him. Question three. What did Job lose as part of his test? A, his health. B, his friends. C, his animals and house. Question four. Who were Job's friends who came to talk to him? A, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. B, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. C, Peter, James, and John. 
Question five. After Job prayed for his friends, how did God bless him? A. God gave him even more wealth. B. God gave him new friends. C. God restored his fortunes and blessed him. Okay, answers. Go and swap. Swap your sheets. All right, well done, you guys. Have some treats. So why did God create you? Like, as we're reading the story of Job, let's see why God created you, okay? So you were created for God's pleasure, okay? You were created for God's pleasure. Revelation says, and all things were created and they were created for thy pleasure, okay? So we're created to please God. We are God's creation, right? You know how when you, create a, you created that beautiful painting, did it bring you pleasure? Were you happy with it? You looked at that painting, I looked at it, and I was happy. I thought, that's a beautiful artwork, right? But because you created it, you were very pleased with it, weren't you? It's the same way. Me with Lego. Yeah, you, when you create your various, you create birds, you create crocodiles, you create giraffes. When I, when you I, create, it's like when I, it's like when Joe had some animals. But what I'm, the point I'm making to you is that you were created for God's pleasure. Thanks. Just as, as you take pleasure when you create something, it's the same way God takes pleasure that he created you. So when God looks at Olumito, God is like, he is amazing. That is beautiful. When God looks at Olumaki, he's like, Olumaki is amazing. That's beautiful. When God looks at him, he's like, that's amazing. That's beautiful. God looks at daddy, he's like, that's amazing. That's beautiful. God looks at me, he's like, that's amazing. That's beautiful. So we were created for God's pleasure. Which is why when we're doing things that honor God, it's like we are walking in our destiny. We are walking in our purpose, okay? Another thing is God wants to connect and have a relationship with you. So God is not going to force you to have a relationship with him. God wants you to do it because you love him. He wants you to do it because you want to. So it's very important that you learn so much about God and how can you have a relationship with God? How can you connect with God? What are the things you need to do to have a relationship with God, do you think? He wants you to read books and your Bible every day. Thank you very much, Olimita. That was beautiful. Well done. Excellent. So... Another thing you have to notice is that you were created to love and enjoy God's creation. So what are God's creation that we can enjoy? I the animals, have, the forests and the rainforests, the deserts, the, the sea. Well, basically everything. The planets, um, the clouds, the sun. The um, the sun and the moon, and very I've got good. one more thing to say. Okay. God wants you to to be creative, to learn love, and serve to people. serve people and um love God. Very good. So now we come to what is your purpose. Your purpose is to love and obey God. The most important thing is for you to love and obey God. If you do that, everything is solved. If you love and obey God, you're doing everything right. If you love and obey God, you're doing everything right. That is the most important commandment. So that's why you're created, to use everything you've got to love and obey God. Whatever skill, whatever talent, 
you use it to love and obey God. If you do that, problem solved. The world would be such a wonderful place to live. Now, this is very important. And this is what a lot of people don't like to hear. Your faith in God will be tested by Satan and sometimes by people close to you. So, for example, yes, exactly. But you don't know what form it's going to come. Sometimes it could be, and this is an, only an example, it could be that there were lots of sweets out there. Someone left the sweets and a note was like, don't touch. And then you go to your bed. You're dreaming about sweets. <coughs> and you sneak down the stairs and you have one. And the sweets are so nice. You have two. But they're all so good. You have three. Oh, no. And by the time you know it, You've eaten all the sweets. Oh, no. You're was that the right thing to do? No. That was wrong. That was, what that was a terrible test. That was the voice telling you, go and eat those sweets, even though you know, even though you know you should not eat those sweets, even though you know you should not be having those sweets. Um, quickly, quickly. Satan can't trick God. Never. Very true. And why can't Satan trick God? Um, no, what is God and what is not God? And because God also created Satan. God created Satan. Satan was originally good, but then Satan did a very naughty thing. He wanted to be like God, so God kicked him out of heaven. And then, because he was kicked out of heaven, he doesn't want anybody else to get into heaven. He doesn't want anybody else to have a relationship with God. So, okay? So that's why he got, like... That's why he's always wandering everywhere, looking for people, trying to trick them, so that they don't have a good relationship with God. Your purpose as well is for you to care for others, show kindness and help those in need. So you should always be helping each other. So Olumakin, you help Olumito when Olumito is not able to do stuff. Imisi, you help Olumakin when Olumakin is not able to do stuff. Olumito, you help as well. You can put things away. You can do every little bit that you can do. And also be kind to people as well. We, okay? we will be kind. We yes. And I'm just, that's why this is there, just to remind you that you should always be kind. Learn, Learn grow, and become a better person, okay? So the way you become a better person is you read the Bible, okay? You pray to God, you go to Bible study, you go to Sunday school, you do Saturday school, right? Learn. You learn. You constantly learn. And the more you learn about God, the more you're going to grow in wisdom. And again, the most important thing as well is for you to be humble and recognize God's greatness. So humble means when you know that everything you have and everything you are was not because of you, it's because God made you that way. That's being humble, is knowing that everything you have and who you are is because of God. That is being humble. As long as you remember those things, you will never be proud. Even when you're driving a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, you will not be proud because you're driving a Lamborghini because you know that God gave you the ability to get that Lamborghini, okay? You will not be proud and arrogant because you live in a beautiful mansion in a beautiful house. Wow. You will not listen. You will not look down on other people that maybe don't have as much. You will not look down on them because you know that God created the opportunity for you to get the wealth. And that's why Job is such a powerful testimony because Job had so much riches, he had so much wealth, right? And the most important person to him was his relationship with God. He loved God so much because he always knew that everything that he had came from God, okay? Second okay. quiz. Bye, Question six. What did Job receive from his brothers and sisters after his troubles? A. Presents and toys. B. Words of encouragement. C. Silver coins and gold rings. Okay. Question seven. 
What was the total number of children Job had after his troubles? A, three, B, seven, C, 10. Question eight, listen. How did Job, are you listening? Yes. Question eight, how did Job's story end? A, he became even richer. C, sorry, B, he lost everything forever. C, God blessed him and gave him even more than before. Question nine. What is one lesson we learn from Job's story? A, we should never ask questions. B, we should always trust God even in hard times. C, we should only talk to our friends when we're sad. Question 10. Why is Job an important person in the Bible? A, because he could fly. B, because he had the most animals. C, because he showed us how to keep loving God no matter what. Are you all done? Yeah. Swap now. So all of it got them all right. Oh yeah. <laughs> I won. All right, treats guys, you get two of each. Now we're going to learn about financial principles, all right? So, first things first, we see who's the person that gives us wealth? God. Who's the person that gives us the, even the ability? God. Because if Job was on a sick bed, would he be able to make any money? No. So the fact that he had good health, he had a sound mind, meant that he could make money. So what we have to always recognise is that God is the one that gives us the ability to get wealthy, Okay. And the only way we can do that is by walking according to God's principles. And how do we learn God's principles? Where do we get God's principles from? Um, the Bible. Bible. From the Bible. Bible. B-I-B-L. So we see that Job was responsible and wise with his wealth. Because... Is that Job? No. no. That's just a thing. Job was responsible and wise with his wealth. We saw that he just had a lot of cattle. 7,000 of this 3000 of that 500 of this 500 of that he had numerous servants so we see that he was very responsible and that's one of the things that you need to do when you've got wealth you need to be wise with it and you need to be responsible with it okay and who can tell me the four ways that you can use money invest, invest spend, spend save, save and live give <laughs> it's not funny guys okay what's the next thing job shared his blessings with others and was generous we see that job was very generous okay he was very generous with people he wasn't known as someone that was stingy you can't be stingy with what god has given you like, you shouldn't be like, stupid with it you shouldn't be silly with it like, you shouldn't be stingy like, with it so what i mean is when you've got money first things first you invest you invest before you start spending it you invest then you spend then you save something and then you give you've got to give you've got to help others what, okay what is the way invest Mm -hmm. invest, um, you spend, mm -hmm. save and give. Mm -hmm. So we see another key thing is when it comes to investment and making money and creating wealth, sometimes you will go through difficult patches. You know, sometimes there will be challenges that you can't, you, you don't understand or you may not have, you may not have seen. The key thing is, in every situation that you're in, you have to trust God. And what does trusting God mean? Um, what does trusting God mean? I don't think. Put Can your hear? hand up. Yeah, put your hand up. Put your, your hand toe. up. Okay. Be faith in God. What does trusting God mean? Be faith in God. Be faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Oh, I don't know what to say now. Um, and love God. Trust God, even, <laughs> even in difficult times. So times when you're sad, trust God. So now we're going to watch another video. And for those of you at home, 
just see the link in the description and you will be able to access the video as well. The is top, right? Not top. So based on what we watched, now what I wanted you to get out of that was this boy, like he was probably your age, either your age or limit or your age or like in when you know he lost his dad. He spoke about them age. No, he was age. younger. Okay, and and and, and, and okay. What then happens, this young boy, because he actually saw what happened, he was traumatized by it. He couldn't speak. You know, he couldn't speak. He was in trauma. And then trauma means that the body and the mind has gone through so much pain and stress that it just shuts down. It doesn't work like it should work, right? So basically, this young boy loses his dad. Then his mum is now a single person trying to look after all of them, decides to take her children to America. They get to America, his mum dies in America. So now he doesn't have a dad, he doesn't have a mum. So these two things are quite major. Those are really difficult times, right? But somehow he's able to carry on and because he carried on and he didn't focus on the darkness, he didn't focus on the pain, he didn't focus on the sadness, he was able to start a lot of businesses until he founded this business that's now made him a billionaire, that's now made him a wealthy, wealthy person. But then who looked after him? Who looked after him? It doesn't say who looked after him. But it could have been his older siblings because he's he's not the oldest. He had an older sibling, so we don't know. But did anyone, um, like, was anybody taking care of him? Of course, we just said that, but we don't know who it was. So the point I'm making, the reason I wanted you to see that video is to show you that it is true. When you go through difficult times, it can seem very very difficult, but God always creates. A solution he always provides a way out of that dark situation and talk about our tono's journey it's very fascinating so now he's a billionaire Wait. and he's of nigerian heritage well is, is that real yes talk about what tono's life is very real no i'm talking about um what year was it is it old did you hear the year what? he started his company in 2013 that's now a billion dollar company but he went to America when he was young. So that's many, many, many years ago. And he's like 40, I think he's 41 or 42 now. So that's quite a number of years ago. Is it 44? Conclusion. So first thing is God's plan for you is perfect. Okay? God's plan for you is what? Perfect. God's plan for you is perfect. Okay. First thing, we see God rewarded Job's faithfulness. What does it mean to be faithful? Um, to, to, to love God so much. What does it mean to be faithful? To love God. To, to always stay with him. Faithful means that no matter what happens, you always stay. You're always loving God. You're always honouring God. That is faithful, no matter what happens. And we see that Job was very faithful. If something goes wrong, if something goes wrong, no matter what, you still love God. Exactly. Number two, trust God even when facing challenges. So trust God even when facing challenges. Is that why you won't fight? Not fight. Challenges could be like okay. maybe you're sad or something didn't happen or you lost your toy, you lost your money or you got told off. You, it could be anything. Or you will not, you will not it's something that makes you not happy. Number three, God's love is powerful. And the end that he has in mind for you is beautiful. Okay? So God's love is very powerful and he always makes sure that the end he has in mind is beautiful. What is the end in mind? That means that all the plans that God has for your life is beautiful. 
So the end is the fact that you're going on a journey and you reach a certain destination. That's the end, right? So it's just like you're growing up, you're a little child, then you become like a teenager, then you become an adult. And as you're growing up and maturing, you're gonna be learning different things, you're gonna be doing different things, you're gonna be accomplishing different things. And each point, there's gonna be something wonderful that God is using you for. Yes, there's the end of everybody's life. The end of everybody's life is when we die. That's the end of everybody's life, okay? That's the end of everybody's life. Everybody's going, going to, whether we like it or not. Yes, if Adam and Eve hadn't sinned, because we would have lived back, forever. Back then, we would have been perfect. Back then. But now we're not perfect. Back, we're making, guess what? We're making, guess what? Back then, when no one was around, and all the sons, you know how long they used to live for? No. They used to live for about 930 years. And how many years have we lived for? But God said... 120. Because, because God said that he's going to decrease that to 120. So how many years do we... People don't live beyond 120. So that's the age so of people now. how many years do we live? How many years do we live? Nobody we knows. Live? Only God knows the years that he's given well, he everybody. Set the max. He set the max to yeah. 120. Thank you for participating. You're done. We're done. Excellent, guys.